is there any doubts from the previous lectures There is no doubts. Can we start the session? Let me share the screen. Is the slides visible? Yes, visible. Okay. Today we are going to discuss about week 5 assignments. So, welcome to NPTEL PMRF tutorials on introductory organic chemistry to August 2023 by Professor Harina Chakrapani and Professor Niraja Deshaputre, myself Anisha Suresh, PMRF TA for this course from IIT Bombay. So this week uh, we have seen that in the lectures I have discussed regarding enols and enolates and their reactions. So first we will be going through the brief summary of what is uh, discussed in uh, this week. Followed by we will be solving previous year assignment questions. We will be solving assignment questions from August 2022 introductory organic chemistry 2. So coming to the summary of week 5. In week 5. The topics discussed were enols and enolates, a brief introduction, followed by molecular orbital picture of enols and enolates, and then Sir have discussed regarding the reactions of enols and enolates, basically aldol condensation reaction. So coming to the topic enols and enolates, like this enol is basically a tautomer of the keto form. So at uh, normal, normal conditions, the keto form will be existing in major compared to the enol form. Because uh, as we, we can see here, the energy of the keto form is less. So the keto form is more stable. Hence, uh, in, under normal condition, uh, molecules will prefer to exist in the keto form than in the enol form. We know, we know that, right? When the energy is lesser, uh, it will be more stabler. So it prefers to exist in that form. That is why keto form normally exists uh, majorly compared to the enol form. This is clear, right? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Then uh, we can see that uh, the... Enol form is a combination of the CC double bond and OH single bond. This is less stable than this CH single bond and uh, C CO double bond. Because we can see here uh, the strength of the uh, CH single bond is 440 whereas uh, that of the OH single bond is 500 kilojoule per mole. And the strength of the C double bond or pi bond is 720 kilojoule per mole. And that of the C double bond, C uh, double bond is 620 kilojoule per mole. So in the enol form, here the bond strength is 1120. And that of the keto form, the bond strength uh, energy will be 1160. So this is almost uh, 40 kilojoule per mole more stable uh, in the keto form than in the enol form. This is clear, right? If we take the sum of the CH single bond and the C double bond or um, pi bond, we will get 1160. That is the bond strength energy. And the enol form, if we compare, uh, the, if we take the OH single bond strength and the C double bond C uh, pi bond strength, it is coming around 1120. So the keto form is having more bond strength. So more the bond strength means it will be more stable. So the keto form is more stable than the enol form. 
so this was discussed in the first lecture then we have seen uh, like how we will estimate the presence of enols or enolates in the system for that to find the evidence of formation of enols uh, this is a typical reaction the proton will be abstracted by some base or something that is present in the system and um, this uh, bond will uh, delocalize into here and this c double bond or bond will break and it can abstract proton from the system so it will result in the formation of this enol so for the estimation of the formation of enols this reaction was carried out in d2o as the solvent so in d2o uh, this deuterium is nmr silent so if we can see the nmr and we are um, noticing the absence of this proton signals in the nmr we can come to know that formation of enols is taking place so for that they carried out the reaction in d2o so first uh, some uh, like from d2o this oxygen like excuse me this oxygen can abstract this proton here they have shown this proton then this bond will delocalize into here and this c double bond of bond will break and it can abstract d plus from the system so it will uh, result in the formation of this enol form then once it is coming back that is uh, this o od bond will break uh, this will come back uh, c double bond o will form and this cc double bond will break and it can abstract deuterium which is present in the system so here the medium is d2o and not water water will be very less so the probability of abstracting d plus is more compared to that of h plus so it will result in replacing one of the hydrogen with the deuterium so here previously in nmr we we, we will be able to see two signals of this uh, proton the ch2 will be showing two signals in nmr right so now one of the proton is uh, replaced by deuterium so this will be nmr silent deuterium is nmr silent so here we could see only one proton in the nmr spectra then now there is more deuterium present in the system and there is more hydrogen present here right so again uh this proton is enolizable so this proton could be abstracted and uh, this bond will shift here a c double bond c bond will form and this co double bond will break and it will abstract a d plus from the system so it will result in the formation of this enol where uh, hydrogen is uh, replaced by deuterium because we are having d2o as the reaction medium now once it is coming back or falling back here this bond will fall back result in the formation of c double bond o and the cc double bond will be breaking and it will abstract d plus from the system as we have mentioned the reaction medium is d2o and not h2o so uh, abstracting d plus will be more feasible than that of h plus so now once it is coming back to the keto form here the two hydrogens that were initially present in the keto form of one phenyl propen one on the two hydrogens are replaced by deuterium so now in the nmr we couldn't see this two signals of the ch2 uh, like uh, two protons of the ch2 instead there will be two deuterium so since deuterium is nmr silent we could, uh, we will not be able to see any signals so this is how uh, scientists have estimated the uh, formation of enols in a uh, reaction medium this is clear right so here these these protons 1 2 3 4 5 these eight protons this will not be affected only this alpha proton will be abstracted and it will result in the formation of enol so here these two alpha protons will be replaced by deuterium remaining all these eight protons will remain as such in the nmr so is this experiment clear 
Yes, ma'am. Okay. Now coming to uh, acid and base catalyzed enolization. Normally, this uh, enolization reaction is not feasible under neutral medium. So as we have seen, the formation of enols is not uh, much favorable because the energy of enols is more than that of the energy of ketones. So we uh, require something to catalyze that reaction. So we can catalyze this reaction either by using acids or by using bases. So first, uh, when the reaction is acid catalyzed, what will happen? This double bond O, this lone pair of oxygen can abstract proton from the H3O+. In acid medium, H3O plus will be there. So this uh, lone pair of oxygen of the carbonyl, it can abstract proton from the H3O plus and it will result in the formation of the species. Now, water can abstract the proton that is alpha to the carbonyl and it will result in shifting of this electron density here and this CO double bond will break resulting in the neutralization of positive charge on the oxygen. So, it will result in the formation of this enol form. This is acid catalyzed enolization of an aldehyde. So, the mechanism of acid catalyzed enolization is clear, right? First here, protonation of this carbonyl carbon will take place and then water will be abstracting the proton resulting in the formation of enol by neutralizing the positive charge on this oxygen. Now, if we see the base catalyzed enolization of an aldehyde, what happens first is OH minus which is the base will abstract the alpha proton. Alpha protons will be more acidic protons. So the base will be abstracting the alpha protons. This bond will break and this electron density will be shifting here. Then this CO double bond will be breaking and this electron density will shift on to towards this oxygen. Now what will happen? This is having negative charge. It will abstract proton from water molecule then OH minus will be leaving. So, uh, protonation on oxygen will result in the formation of enol. So, this is the base catalyzed enolization of aldehyde. Is this mechanism clear to everyone? Acid and base catalyzed enolization. And uh, are you clear like uh, but yes, in neutral medium, enolization is not taking place? Because of the unstable nature of the enol compared to that of the ketone, in neutral media, this formation of enol is not feasible. So, for that uh, enolization reaction to uh, forcefully take place, we need to use catalysts like acid or base. Clear, right? And these are the mechanisms for acid and base catalyzed enolization. Any doubts? There are no doubts. Uh, we can uh, go to the molecular orbital picture of uh, enolates. So, we know that uh, this allyl anion, it is a 3 atom. 4 electron system. Right. 1, 2, 3. 3 carbons and 4 electrons. This double bond and uh, this double bond will constitute 2 electrons and this negative charge will be constituting 2 electrons. So, this is called a 3 atom 4 electron system. Similar is the case with enolates. Enolates are also 3 atom 4 electron system. So, these are comparable. Right. In case of allyl anion, this is symmetrical. This can uh, lead to formation of this. Both are symmetrical. Uh, so, because of that, here the psi 1, psi 1 will be having all the orbitals in one direction. Psi 2 will be having lobes. And since there are 4 electrons, the electrons will fill in psi 1 and psi 2. So, psi 2 will be the homo and psi 3 will be the lumo. 
clear and here there will be a node so this is the molecular orbital picture of allyl anion this is clear right Now coming to the molecular orbital picture of enolate, uh, we can see that since an electronegative oxygen atom is present, this negative charge mostly favors to be uh, present on the oxygen. Like negative charge will stay with electronegative atom. So, this structure will be more favored than this one where negative charge is present on the carbon. This will result by delocalization. So, this structure is less favored than that of the, the this structure. And we can see when we compare both the allyl anion and this enolate anion, uh, the psi1 and psi2 both came down in energy. Right, here we can see the energy have come down for psi1 and psi2 because of the presence of electronegative oxygen atom. We have seen the molecular orbital uh, pictures of uh, several atoms. When electronegative atom is present, then the uh, energy will come down. And here we have seen that this negative charge uh, is uh, like negative charge uh, favors to present on the oxygen atom. Because of that in psi 1 the orbital contribution on this oxygen will be more and that in psi 2 that of the carbon will be more. Clear right? This is because negative charge negative charge will stay on oxygen stay with oxygen because of that the orbital contribution on oxygen in psi 1 will be more and here the orbital contribution uh, of carbon in psi 2 will be more so this is the homo and uh, since this orbital contribution on the carbon is more so this carbon at the terminal is more likely to react in the case of an enolate is this clear? Any doubts? Anyone having doubts? So this is what was discussed regarding the molecular orbital picture of enolate anion. Sir have compared it with that of the allyl anion which is also an Three atom, four electron system similar to that of the enolate anion. Any doubts? Now the last topic that was discussed in week 5 was the reactions of enols and enolates. And majorly, uh, first uh, so I have discussed regarding the alpha bromination reaction uh, in acetic acid medium. So the acetone when treated with bromine in acetic acid medium it will lead to the formation of bromoacetone so what will be happening so first in acetic acid it is an acidic medium so it will lead to formation of enol and once this enol will come back. It will attack the bromine and it will lead to formation of this bromoacetone. But so that mechanism is shown here. First, this will be falling down, then proton will be abstracted from acetic acid, then once it will fall down, 
bromine will be abstracted and this uh, pro uh, after proton loss it will uh, result in the formation of bromoacetone this mechanism is clear right now in the presence of uh, base what will happen in the presence of base base will be abstracting this leading to formation of enolate you are clear right this is called enolate and this is called enol so in the basic medium it will lead to formation of enolate then it will fall down lead to abstraction of bromine and first it will result in the formation of bromoacetone still there are more protons present in the alpha position and it can uh, lead to abstract uh, and uh, oh minus is present in the medium it can lead to abstraction of these hydrogens and it will result in formation of cbr3 till there will be more oh minus so again oh minus it will be adding on to this carbonyl once it will fall down cbr3 will be eliminated and it will lead to formation of acid and this cbr3 minus can abstract the proton from the acid and it will lead to formation of chbr3 which is bromoform and similarly this reaction with the base is used as a uh, like method for testing the me methyl ketones iodoform test it is named as iodoform test and it is the mechanism happening will be similar to that of uh, this reaction as we have seen here with the base base leading to formation of bromoform so similar mechanism will be taking place in iodoform test where instead of this uh, bromine iodine will be used so this oh minus will be abstracting the proton uh, so three times it will happen and it will lead to formation of ci3 then oh will be attacking at the carbonyl carbon and uh, ch this ci3 will be eliminated it will abstract the proton from this o minus and it will lead to formation of carboxylate and this iodoform so this is used as a test for identifying the presence of methyl ketones okay then finally aldol condensation reaction was discussed where first an enolate ion will be formed and it will attack on this once it is falling back it will attack on this unenolized aldehyde and it will lead to formation of this compound and it can abstract a proton from the water leading to formation of this aldol this product is called a aldol beta hydroxy aldehyde so sorry beta hydroxy aldehyde this is known as aldol now what will happen here again base can abstract the proton again alpha hydrogen will be present base can abstract that proton it will lead to formation of this enolate then we can see uh, this is similar to that of even cb intermediate right then it will undergo even cb mechanism this will fold down this double bond will shift here and this oh will be eliminated leading to the formation of this alpha beta unsaturated aldehyde so this is the aldol condensation reaction which was discussed finally in uh, week 5 so is this clear to everyone now we can go to discussion of uh, problems is this clear yes ma'am then you can follow uh, clayden chapter 21 for uh, enols and enolates uh, basic introduction 
followed by chapter 26 for alkylation reactions of enols and chapter 27 for aldol reactions. Now coming to question number 1. This is the first question. We are having a cyclohexene com uh, cyclohexenone compound here. It was treated with LDA in THF and it will uh, lead to formation of an enolate and it was quenched using this compound. So what will be the major product that will be resulting here? Any idea? Here LDA is a base. Idium diisopropyl. Option three. Option three. It is the right answer. LDA is the base. So here there is this proton. It is difficult to abstract. So here this proton will be abstracted by LDA. It will lead to formation of enolate at this position. We will see the mechanism. So LDA will be abstracting this proton. So here this electron density will shift here. This C double bond or bond will break and this uh, electron density will be shifted towards the oxygen. Then once when the oxygen, electron density on the oxygen will fall down, this double bond will break and it will go and attack on this position. You are clear why it is attacking on this position and not this position, right? Because iodine is a better living group than that of the chlorine. That is why uh, this enolate will be coming and attacking on this carbon rather than at this carbon. Clear? Because of the living group ability of iodide. So it will come and attack at this position. Iodide will be leaving and it will result in the formation of this product. Which is option C. Any doubt regarding the mechanism? Is it clear? So the answer for the first question is option C. That is this alpha substituted product. Is question 1 clear to everyone? Can we move to question number two? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Coming to question number two. Here we are given this compound. It is treated with butyl lithium in dry THF and finally quenched with RBR, which is an which can be alkyl bromide. So, what will be the major product that will be forming in this reaction? So you might, you might be knowing this group, right? This is called imine. So you, you might be recalling imine in amine tautomerism. Imine in amine tautomerism which is similar to that of ketoenol tautomerism. So what will be happening? Any idea regarding which is the major product? Option 1. Option 1. Option 1 will be the right answer. So first, this is the imine form. So in the presence of butyl lithium, which is a base, uh, it will abstract this proton, which is alpha to this imine. And then this electron density will shift here and it will lead to formation of this uh, N-, as we can see here. This is 
inamine. Now once the electron density will fall down, this double bond will break, it will attack this R and the Br which is a living group will be living. It will lead to formation of this alkylated product. Mechanism is clear to everyone, right? Any doubts? If you are having any doubts, you can feel free to ask in between. So the correct answer is option 1. Mechanism is clear, right? Now we will move forward to question number 3. So here a substituted cyclohexanone is given. So it was treated with LDA at THF at minus FDA degree Celsius and quenched with this allyl bromide. Substituted allyl bromide. So it will be giving a major product X. What will be that major product? That is the question. So this uh, one hint I can give. LDA is a bulky base. So it will lead to formation of kinetic enolate only. Kinetic enolate means if there is uh, any substitutions, uh, it will lead to formation of uh, thermodynamic enolate. So, as an example, I can show here. If enolate is forming here, this is thermodynamic enolate. This is substituted enolate, right? So, this will be stable one. This will be the thermodynamic enolate. And this will be the kinetic enolate. It will be less substituted. Here we can see, here it is substituted at three positions only, but here substituted at four positions. So this is the kinetic enolate. This is the thermodynamic enolate. Since LDA is a bulky base, it will lead to formation of Kinetic enolate only. Now what will be happening? Any idea what will be the major product? Second product. Second product. Yeah, that is the right answer. We will see the mechanism. So first LDA which is a bulky base. You might be remembering the structure of LDA. Lithium diisopropyl amine. So this will be abstracting the proton. It will lead to formation of this enolate. Now this enolate will be falling down. This double bond will go and attack on this uh, double bond of this ally. Now this double bond will shift here and the bromine will be eliminated leading to formation of this product. Excuse me. Hmm. Leading to formation of this product. Mechanism is clear. Any doubts? We can also show the attack like can go and attack here and the bromine leaves. Both ways are possible. Mechanism is clear, right?
so option b is the correct answer according to the mechanism we have seen now any doubts or can we move forward to question number 4 Hello. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So, coming to question number four, here the product is given. Product is phenyl vinyl ketone, which is uh, formed after aldol condensation reaction. So, the question is, which combination of carbonyl compounds gives phenyl vinyl ketone by an aldol condensation? So, phenyl vinyl ketone is a product of aldol condensation reaction taking place between two carbonyl compounds. So, some examples are given, uh, some combinations are given here. So, what will be the right combination leading to the formation of phenyl vinyl ketone? Option A, ma'am. Option A. That is the right answer. We will see the mechanism of that aldol condensation reaction taking place between these two components. So, here, this phenyl. This compound will be, uh, ha this compound is having inolizable protons. If we compare the other one. That is formaldehyde. It is not having any inolizable protons. So, this is having inolizable protons that is alpha proton. So, the base will be abstracting that proton leading to formation of the enolate as we can see here. Now, what will happen when this enolate will fall down? The C double bond C will go and attack on the electrophilic carbonyl center of this formaldehyde. It will lead to formation of this beta hydroxy compound so again the base can abstract the proton that will be present here it can lead to formation of the enolate now this will undergo an even cp elimination reaction even cp we have discussed in uh, last to last lecture right so mechanism is clear for everyone and uh, this is similar to that of a conjugate base. So, it can undergo E1CB reaction and it will result in the formation of this product which is, which is phenyl vinyl ketone. Mechanism is clear, right? Aldol condensation. First, enolate will be formed where there will be um, inolizable protons. So, in the case, here only in this compound, inolizable proton is present. So, it will lead to formation of enolate. Then that enolate will go and attack on this electrophilic carbon of this formaldehyde. It will lead to formation of this beta hydroxy compound. Then it can undergo even CB elimination uh, after again formation of enolate with the help of a base and it will lead to formation of this aldol condensation product which is phenyl vinyl ketone. So option A is the right answer. Any doubt regarding the mechanism or anything? Okay, clear ma'am. Okay. Now coming to question number 5. The stepwise synthesis to saccharin is given below. Predict the correct reactants P, Q and R. So here they have given toluene with some reagent. It will undergo this uh, sulfonylation. Then uh, 
it will uh, react with something and lead to formation of SO2 and NH2 by replacing the Cl. Then some uh, oxidation will be taking place because this CH3 is converted into an acid and then this amine will combine with that acid leading to formation of this amide bond. So what will be the reactants P, Q and R? Option C. Option C is the right answer. First, it will react with this compound, leading to formation of this ortho and para sulfonylated compounds. Out of that, ortho will lead to formation of the saccharin. Because in the case of para, there will not be that uh, like uh, formation of amide bond will not be feasible. Because of that, the para compound that will be resulting here will not lead to formation of saccharin. So we will see the mechanism. So first, toluene will be reacting with ClSO3H leading to formation of these two compounds, ortho and para products. We have seen that in electrophilic aromatic substitution reaction, this <coughs> uh, it is more feasible at ortho and para position. Electrophilic aromatic substitution because we have seen that at ortho and para position electron density will be present so it can go and attack the uh, electrophile so it will lead to formation of this ortho product and this para product out of that um, saccharin will be resulted only from this ortho product then when this uh, ortho product is treated with ammonia, this SO2Cl, it will be uh, converted into SO2NH2. So S double bond O double bond O Cl upon reacting with NH3, it will lead to formation of SO2NH2. Now upon oxidation, so we can use strong oxidizing agents like KMnO4. So, this CH3 will be converted directly into COOH. KMnO4 can convert the CH3 directly into COOH. It is a strong oxidizing agent. So, what will happen? It will lead to formation of C double bond O, OH, S double bond O, double bond O, NH2. And once it will attack, it will lead to formation of the saccharin. Clear, right? How it is taking place? And clear why SO2Cl, this para 1 is not leading to formation of the saccharin. Because it cannot lead to formation of this cyclic amide structure. Because of that, we are eliminating this. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So, the right answer is option 3. Now, coming to question number 6. So, here a 7 member ring is given. It is treated with NaNH2 and methyl iodide. So, we are first treating it with NaNH2 and methyl iodide. And here they have given the pK of this proton of this um, amide is uh, 17 and that of these two hydrogens is 30. So if pK is less, that proton will be more acidic. It will be abstracted first by the base. So when NaNH2 is treated first with this compound, this um, amide proton will be first abstracted and then uh, that will lead to methylation at this nitrogen. Then it is further treated with LDA. So LDA will be abstracting this proton leading to formation of enolate. And then uh, when it is quenched with ETBR, uh, ethyl group will be coming here. So what will be the product?
option b option b will be the right answer so i will show you the mechanism here they have shown this pk pk 17 this proton pk 17 and these two proton pk is 30 so the one which is having the lowest pk that proton will be more acidic so that proton will be first abstracted so nnh2 nh2 minus will be the base it will abstract this proton lead to formation of this uh, enolate here so this is the enolate once it will fall down this double bond will be going and attacking on this methyl carbon and iodine will be leaving leading to formation of this compound that is methylation at the nitrogen now in lda what lda will do lda will abstract the proton that is present at this position then uh, it will lead to formation of this enolate and once this enolate will be falling back it will go and attack on this carbon of this ethyl brom sorry this is ethyl bromide this is ethyl bromide so it will go and attack on this carbon of this ethyl bromide leading to formation of this product clear right so here there was one mistake i have drawn propyl bromide but the the agent that was given is ethyl bromide which could be represented like this so this will go and attack on this carbon and this bromide will be eliminating and this will be resulting as the product any doubts so the right option is option b So you are clear why this proton is abstracted and not this proton first, right? That is why they have given the PK here, not to cause confusion. Now let's move forward to question number seven. Coming to question number seven, iodoform reaction is a confirmatory test for compounds having. So they have given. Uh, uh, iodoform reaction is a confirmatory test for compounds having CO CH three CH three CO NH two COOH. So we have seen uh, why iodoform reaction is done. So it will finally lead to formation of CH three, which is uh, yellow in color. So that will indicate the formation uh, presence of some compound in the system. We have seen in the summary when we were discussing. So, which is that compound? Ketone. Yeah, COCH three is used for confirmatory test of this methyl ketones. So, it was previously used uh, this iodoform, which is an old name for triiodomethane. So, it is uh, used for the uh, for identifying the presence of methyl ketones in the system. So, in the presence of NaOH and I two, first this OH will be abstracting one proton, leading to formation of this monoiodinated compound. Then again OH will be abstracting the alpha proton, leading to diiodinated compound after formation of enolate. Then again third time it will be abstracting, and it will lead to formation of this compound Ci three and ketone. Then what will happen? The OH minus will go and attack on this carbonyl carbon, lead to formation of this tetrahedral intermediate. And once this oxygen will fall down, Ci three will be leaving. And this Ci three it can abstract this proton. This will be acidic proton, and it can abstract this acidic proton and lead to formation of carboxylate ion and iodoform. So this iodoform will be yellow colored. and that yellow coloration will indicate the presence of methyl ketone in the system clear right so that is why 
this idoform reaction is used to indicate the presence of uh, or it is used as a confirmatory test for the presence of methyl ketones in the reaction medium. This question is clear, right? The right option is medial ketones. Up to this question, there is no doubts, right? Okay. Now coming to question number 8. So here they have uh, shown the formation of a silylated enol ether. What is the final product of the given reaction occurring via the silyl enol ether intermediate? So here first the triethyl amine will be abstracting the proton and it will go and attack on this TMS chloride. TMS chloride will be trimethyl silyl chloride. So, here this proton will be abstracted by this ET3N. It will lead to formation of uh, enolate. And once it is falling back, it will go and attack on the silicon. This will be removed and it will Okay, sorry. Here, this is not attacking on this position. We have seen the we have seen if uh, the reaction is based on charged intermediates, then uh, that will at, uh, oxygen atom will be attacking over the carbonyl one. If it is orbital interaction mediated, then the carbon will be reacting. So, what will be happening? It will lead to formation of this enolate and that can attack on this trimethyl silyl chloride removing chlorine and it will lead to formation of this product. Now, this will be going and attacking on this benzaldehyde in the presence of TaCl4. So, what will be the product that will be resulting? That is the question. Option B. Option? Option B will be the right answer. We can see the mechanism. So, here... We are having this silyl enol ether. So, in the presence of PHCHO, which is benzaldehyde and TACL4, this TACL4, it will be activating this uh, aldehyde. TACL4 is like a Lewis acid. It will be activating this aldehyde. Then, this uh, lone pair of oxygen will fall down. And this double bond will go and attack on this carbonyl carbon and this will be neutralized leading to formation of this compound. And this Cl minus, Cl minus from this TiCl4. So silicon and uh, halogens are having more affinity. So Cl minus will be coming and abstracting this um, CiMe3. So this will neutralize and it will lead to formation of this compound. And then again, this chlorine can come and attack here and the chlorine will come and attack on this TACL3 and this bond will be breaking. It will go and attack on SIME3 and this Cl- will be leaving, leading to formation of this compound. And when we are doing hydrolysis, this SIME3 will be removed and OH will be coming. This SIME3 group, OSI bond is very labile. So, upon hydrolysis, OSIME3 will be replaced by OH. Clear? Yes, yes. Okay. So, here the main point is, 
lewis acid is needed to get silylenol ethers to react that is why we are using tacl4 tacl4 is a lewis acid the key step is an aldol attack of the silylenol ether with the lewis acid complex electrophile so here the lewis acid complex electrophile is this and then this uh, silylenol ether will be doing an aldol attack on this electrophile so that is the key step so the right option is option b as mentioned so the mechanism is clear right now coming to question number 9 so identify the final product of the following reformatsky reaction so the zinc bromide compound is given and an electrophile is given on acid workup what will be the product that will be resulting out from this reaction it is a reformatsky reaction Reformatsky reaction is normally used for the reaction of alpha halo uh, esters or something uh, to lead to formation of uh, beta hydroxy compounds. But here, this is not alpha. This is a beta beta compound. So some difference in mechanism is there compared to the classic Reformatsky reaction mechanism. any idea regarding what will be the product option c ma'am option c will be the right answer so first we will see the mechanism of reformatsky reaction followed by we will be seeing the mechanism that is taking place in this system so this is the classic mechanism for Re reformatsky reaction first the zinc will add on to this halide that is alpha hal this is alpha halo ester so it uh, it will undergo insertion into this alpha halo ester leading to formation of this and then this dimer will undergo a transfer of groups like this this uh, double bond o will be abstracting this zinc this bond will break and this double bond o will be abstracting this thing and this bond will be breaking so it will lead to formation of two molecules of this compound two molecules will be formed so now what what it will do it can um the zinc will coordinate with the oxygen of this uh, aldehyde or ketone in, in our case it was an aldehyde so the zinc can coordinate with the aldehyde and once when it is falling this uh, zinc oxygen bond is breaking and falling down this enolate will be going and attacking on the electrophilic carbon leading to formation of this compound so this is a six member transition state six member transition state for the reaction this is shown to like uh, for predicting the stereochemistry and all now we are having this compound and this upon hy uh, hydrolysis or uh, treating upon acid workup this uh, zn x2 will be removed and oh will be coming it will leading to formation of beta hydroxy ester from alpha halo ester it is leading to formation of beta hydroxy ester so this is the classic mechanism of reformatsky reaction now we will see what is happening in our reaction that is given so first what will be ha happening this is the compound that is given to us already zinc is inserted so 
now what will happen uh, this oxygen oxygen of this aldehyde it can abstract the zinc this bond will be breaking and this double bond will go and attack upon here it will lead to formation of this intermediate now this this will be negatively charged this will be positively charged right so this bond will go and attack on the ester and this oet will be removed it will lead to formation of this five membered lactone this is a little different mechanism compared to the classic reformatsky reaction because in our case this is not alpha bromo compound it is beta bromo compound that is why the mechanism is slightly different from that, that of the reformatsky reaction but is the mechanism clear so the zinc can coordinate with both this oxygen of this uh, electrophile as that of the ester then this oxygen will attack on the zinc this bond will break and this double bond will go and attack on the electrophile it is similar to that of this step so it will lead to formation of this compound and then this bond can break and this o minus will go and attack on this ester oet will be removed and it will lead to formation of this five membered lactone mechanism is clear right yes ma'am okay so the right answer is option c if you are having any doubts you can feel free to stop and ask in between okay up to question number 9 it is clear right now coming to question number 10 categorize each of the following molecules as a hemiacetal hemi ketal acetal ketal hydrate of an aldehyde or hydrate of a ketone so they have given five different compounds we have to classify them as hemi acetal hemi ketal acetal ketal hydrate etc last one is hydrate what excuse me i did compound 5 is hydrate second compound 5 is hydrate okay second option second option is the right answer we will see what is hemiketal acetal hemiacetal etc so this we have seen in last to last class so this is hemiacetal that means if we are having an aldehyde and uh, some alcohol is attacking on it it will lead to formation of acetal o r dash so alcohol attacking on aldehyde will result in the formation of hemiacetal if two such alcohols are attacking it will lead to formation of acetal this will be removed again again o r double dash will be coming and attacking and this will be removed as oh2 plus it will lead to formation of acetal hemi acetal means instead of this aldehyde if alcohol is attacking on an um, ketone it will lead to formation of hemi ketal and hemi acetal means two alcohols will be attacking on the like this r dash r3 or2 or4 
so this will be ketal and this is the hydrate water molecules will be attacking and it will be giving hydrate so we can see this is this was initially a ketone and if methanol is attacking on it it will lead to formation of this so this will be hemi ketal so then this will be this will be the initial compound and two molecules of ethanol will be adding so this is an example of acetal here this was initially an aldehyde and one molecule of ethanol is adding so this is an example of hemiacetal this is an example of ketone and two alcohol molecules will be adding this will be removed so this is an example of ketal it is also uh, ketal is sometimes called as acetal itself and this is also an example of ketal it can also be called as acetal at times and here two hydrate molecules are two alcohol molecules are adding as we have seen here see this so this is an example of hydrate so option b is the right answer okay yes ma'am now coming to question number 11 here identify the missing reactants or products in the following acetal protect, protecting group reaction so here this glycol ethylene glycol we are uh, used for protection of this compound so what will be the product that will be forming and here they have given the product so what will be the reactants that are used so these are the four options so what can be the right option so when we compare ketone and ester which is more reactive ketone or ester reactivity of ketone is more, ketone. more than that of ester right so here this glycol will be attacking on the ketone compared to that of the ester because ketone is more reactive than that of the ester this glycol will be attacking on the ketone so the product that will be resulting is this one so here the product that will be forming is now what will be the reactants that is involved here so here some ketone might be present and then this glycol will be added so it will be protecting that ketone so what will be the right answer first option first option is the right option so here there will be a triple bond plus we are adding ethylene glycol so ethylene glycol uh, will lead to formation of an acetal here this is clear right yes ma'am okay so the right answer is option 1
here because the reactivity of ketone is more than that of the ester glycol will be protecting the ketone and here they have shown the acetal that is formed so it has resulted from the reaction of a ketone and ethylene glycol so option 1 is the right option now coming to question number 12 what is the percentage distribution of the elimination products formed in the reaction given below so here naoet is the base that will be used it will abstract the proton then it will undergo an elimination reaction so they have shown it will result in the formation of two products one and two so they are asked like what will be the percentage distribution of these products here this nao et is a base it can abstract this proton it will remove this and this product will be formed and if this proton is abstracted they are shown it can lead to formation of a double bond here and it will lead to formation of this two so what will be the percentage distribution of this products fourth option ma'am fourth option ah ah this is because this double bond which is forming on the bridge head that is not feasible according to bread's rule we have seen about bread's rule in some of the previous lecture so according to bread's rule it is an empirical observation that states that double bond can't be placed at the bridge head of a bridged ring system unless the ring is large enough so we are not having a large enough ring so this is a forbidden structure double bond cannot be placed at the bridge head so this is a forbidden system according to the bread's rule so because of that the product two that is shown here this is not feasible so this will be 0% and this will be 100% clear yes ma'am okay accepted answer is option d now coming to question number 13 which of the following is the structure of most stable enol form of 2 methyl pentane 3 on pentane 3 on means 1 2 3 4 5 2 methyl this is 2 methyl pentane 3 ohm so what will be the most stable enol form so we can the first option b because first come first come yeah first option will be the right option anyway we can uh, rule out option d because this is not an enol that is resulted from 2 methyl pentane 3 ohm the ohm means Uh, this double bond will be present here sorry uh, ox double bond o will be present here now out of this three uh, this will be the most stable because it is the most substituted double bond it is substituted in the four positions right this is a thermodynamic enol thermodynamic enol because this proton which is hindered is abstracted and it is resulting in the formation of the enol and it is the most substituted enol here it is substituted at four positions so because of that this will be the most stable one here we can see this is substituted at three positions only this is also substituted at three positions only these are hydrogens so because of that this can be ruled out this is the right option because this is a thermodynamic enol so option a is the right option any doubts
now coming to question number 14 so here they have given a scheme the following scheme shows a mechanism for alpha bromination of a methyl ketone with bromine in ethanoic acid in which stage do the curly arrows wrongly show the flow of electrons so you observe the flow of electrons through the arrows so and see uh, which arrows are representing the wrong flow of electrons so first this is showing this lone pair of electrons will be abstracting the proton from acetic acid so now this is having protonated carbonyl compound now acetate will be abstracting one of the proton that is shown by this oac which is negatively charged it will abstract the proton and this will flow in this direction so acetic acid will be removed after abstraction of the proton now they are telling bromine will be coming and attacking on this double bond and this double bond will shift to here and then this proton that will be present on this carbonyl will be abstracted by the bromine leading to the formation of the product so in one two three or four which is showing the wrong arrows stage three three is showing the wrong flow of arrows because the enolate will be going and attacking the bromine. So the right flow of electrons will be. This lone pair of electrons will fall down. And this double bond will go and attack on the bromine. And bromide will be removed. So this is the right flow of electrons. Clear right? Any doubts? Now coming to the last question of today's lecture. Which is the main product of the following reaction? So here a diester compound is given and it is treated with a base NaOET in presence of ethanol and finally undergo hydrolysis so what will be the product that will be resulting option d option Option B. Yes, ma'am. Actually, option A will be the correct answer. Here you see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Right. It is a 6 carbon system. So, here if you are saying this is option B, you, you should count this carbon also. 1, 2, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. There will be 7 carbons. So this will not be the right option. So we will see the mechanism. So this is a 6 carbon system. Which is an ester, diester. So this is known as Dieckmann condensation. Dieckmann condensation. It is an intramolecular aldol condensation reaction taking pl place in a diester compound. So here this is having a 6 carbon system 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So this proton will be abstracted by OET in our system. Our base is OET minus. So that will abstract the proton leading to formation of an enolate. So this is the enolate that will be resulting. Now this enolate will be falling down. This double bond will go and attack on this carbonyl carbon of the ester. So now this tetrahedral intermediate is resulted and when this oxygen will be falling down this will be OR 
or OET in our system will be removed. Clear? So this will be the product that is resulting. So as you can see, this is an equilibrium reaction, right? So to ensure that this reaction will go to completion, again this proton will be abstracted. It will lead to formation of the enol and or enolate and that will fall down, abstract proton from the system upon hydrolysis and it will give the product. So this ensures that the equilibrium is broken and it is move forward towards the product. Mechanism is clear, right? If it was a seven-membered uh, diester system, then the answer we will get will be option D. Mechanism is clear? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So, this was the last question. So, are you having any doubts regarding any of the questions that we have discussed? If there are no further doubts, uh, then thank you for spending your time to attend this lecture. We can meet next week discussing problems from week 6. Thank you. Ma thank you. Thank you, ma'am.